And how bad could it be? All right, now I'm starting to feel stupid. Oh yeah, you should do this to your car. This episode, we finally install that new motor and we get to see if the car will actually run. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and get the engine in the car. And when I took it out of the car, it was not this tall. I've got the intake manifold on it now, so it's going to be a tight fit. So we'll see what happens. All right, well, the engine's installed now, finally. And I uh, had a lot of trouble getting the last bolt out because I, I was stupid and I put the, uh, the bolt on the head in the back and it was just a pain in the butt to get to it. But the engine's installed now, got my motor mounts in there and that's kind of what they look like. I made those from some trailing arms from a W body and they've been working pretty good. But they're in good shape. And the motor looks pretty good, I think. So I think we'll call it a night here and pick it up later on. Alright guys, today we're going to be working on getting this transmission bolted up here. So down there you can see the flywheel where the flux plate exposed. And there's a gap there between the engine and the transmission. And it's, might be kind of, it might be kind of hard to tell, but uh, the two are just not lined up very well at all right now. Alright, so down there I've got the dowel pin. You can see it's a little bit higher than it needs to be. So the transmission is just not lined up perfectly here. And that's the hole where it's gotta go into. So I gotta get this side of the transmission up about an inch or two, or the engine down a little bit. Now what I've got going on here is that the engine is being held up in the back end of it by this jack. So I can kind of adjust it. And now I just need to do the same thing with this transmission too. All right, so I've got it kind of in that dowel pin there. That bolt is just kind of sitting there right now. And now I just need to go ahead and go around the whole bell housing and just make sure things are lined up properly. It looks like the transmission needs to come down just a little bit. That way that top will sort of cinch up together. And then I can go ahead and shove the rest of these two bolts in there and um, see if she'll massage herself in there. You know your bell housing is lined up well when your bolt's going easily. I can basically hand thread these in now. Oh yeah, she's good. All right, so I've got the transmission bolted on now. The only thing I'm missing in there is the flex plate to torque converter bolts. But the next thing I'm gonna be doing here now is I'm gonna go ahead and get the exhaust bolted on. Now, one of the nice things about this motor with these exhaust manifolds I'm using is that they have this little cutout there. So you can get the bolt in there first and get the manifold on there without having to fiddle with the gaskets at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here, and that should make this a little bit easier. And then after I have the two bolts in there, I'll just go ahead and slide the gasket down there. In case you're curious, you can really get to these bolts from this fender well. 
but you have to take the tire off. So it may not have been the best design, but it works. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start installing some of these accessories in the front. Uh, the first thing I've got to install is this power steering pump, which goes right here. And I should really put this on before I put the turbocharger on here, because there's no way it's going to get on afterward. I might not even be able to get it on right now, actually. Come on, baby. Oh, it's tight. Uh, Don't be like this. Oh, it's so tight. God. All right, now I'm starting to feel stupid. If I didn't feel stupid before, I'm definitely feeling stupid now. Thankfully, it's so easy to get to these bolts from down here. You know, if you ever design your headers, you know, you should always make sure that they're in the way of everything and that they're real pain in the butt to get to you. All right, maybe now she'll go on. Give me some room. Give me some room. Something more. Fun. Maybe now? Yeah, there she goes. Now I just have to reinstall the header again. This is fun, guys. Oh, yeah. You should do this for your car. With that taken care of, it was finally time to install the turbo. This is a whole set HX35. It is sized pretty small for this motor, but this thing works pretty well there. I'm installing it using V-band flanges, which is always kind of fun here to line those up. But with some massaging, I was able to get this thing lined up properly and installed. The flux plates between the front wheel drive cars and the rear wheel drive cars are a little bit different. You can see the F body one on the right hand side, that's the rear wheel drive one. And because they're different, I have to use a longer bolt here with a little bit of a spacer in it. So they're about a half inch difference there. Now what you're seeing here is me taking about an hour to go ahead and create some sort of spacer that just I did not use at all. It ended up being garbage. I was not happy with it at all. Um, in the end, I didn't think that having such a small spacer would be enough to take uh, that kind of load on it. The final solution was to use a nut and a washer that were sized a little bit higher than what I was using, and this will give us a little bit more room and more friction to bite off of there, and should be a lot more stable. With that taken care of, I needed to go ahead and create a new bolt hole for the larger throttle body because this intake manifold did not have the extra bolt for it. So I need to go ahead and drill a hole and tap it for that new throttle body. The sensors for these throttle bodies are screwed in using a security torx bit. I ended up taking all of them out there because they do tend to rust and they will tend to stick there too. And I actually had to drill out one of them there because it would not come out. And I ended up replacing all of them with a stainless steel bolt, which actually looks a little bit better and is a lot easier to take out and uh, reinstall.
With that being done, it was finally time to install the AC compressor bracket. This piece right here isn't my proudest piece of work, but it holds the tensioner and the idler pulleys pretty well, and it's really strong. It's more function over form for this thing. All right, so at this point I've got most of the accessories on. I've got my AC bracket on here finally. I did some uh, bracing to it to sort of fix it. So this should be okay for now. And it feels a lot sturdier than it was before. So hopefully this thing will last a little bit longer than it did before. And uh, maybe this guy will stop squeaking now too. Yeah, I guess we'll see. She's coming along. One of the, uh, the next things I need to do as well, I need to go ahead and make a block off plate here because uh, this is where the uh, idle air controller was sitting before and it used to be part of the, the intake manifold with the Camaro setup but with the L67 throttle body it's part of the throttle body itself now so this is the new IFC valve here so I need to block this off otherwise I'll have a vacuum leak for the throttle body what I'll go ahead and do uh, I ran the, the W body uh, throttle cable here so this will go from this side now and so it should make this a little bit cleaner looking at least if you're looking at the intake manifold itself because you won't have a throttle body or a throttle cable lying on top of it anymore. All right, so I'm gonna get back to it. The next thing I went ahead and did is to change my spark plug gap for the new spark plugs. Because I'm running such a high amount of boost, I need to bring the spark plug gap down really small. And for this car, I do t go down to about 025, so it is a really tight gap in these things. All right, so I've decided to work on the IAC block off plate. And what I've done here is I've grabbed a piece of cardboard um, and I've kind of cut out into the outline of what the ISC would be. So that'll be my little template. So I think I decided to use some stainless steel for this to have lying around. I have a lot of this, this sheet metal and scrap metal here, so I'll probably use some of that. And I'll probably just take a little bit of a corner off there, just start cutting that into the shape I need it to be. All right, so I just spent probably 20 minutes looking for a, a Sharpie. I cannot find a single one here, so so I'm just going to go ahead and just, you know, cut it. <laughs> How bad could it be?
One of the last things to install was the intercooler plumbing. Well, at this point, everything is pretty much assembled. Everything that I can think of, at least, unless I'm just missing something, which I am apparently, actually. I see a wire I missed. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it off there for tonight. But I got pretty much everything done today that I wanted to. I got that block off plate installed. Look, not looking too bad there. And uh, I got my belt situation fixed here. My AC compressor bracket is in a lot better shape now. And I'm hoping that that solves that issue. I'll probably get some oil tomorrow or tonight or something like that. Then tomorrow will be the day I fire it up. Alright, well she's almost ready to go here. I've got some new oil in it. I've got a new filter in there too. So some of the bare necessities are here. There still isn't any coolant in here. Uh, just because, uh, you know, I'm kind of nervous about what I did with the, the cam timing. I retarded the cam timing a little bit in this car. And I haven't really checked for piston to, va piston to valve clearance, so hopefully they don't, they don't become too friendly here. But if they do, uh, I don't want to put coolant in here because then I have to, if I have to tear the motor apart, I have to replace the oil again. I'll run it without coolant for a little bit here just to see if it, it'll fire up here. It does need a new tune for the new uh, throttle body because it has a different mass airflow sensor. But, you know, um, for now it should at least just fire up. The tables are pretty close, so it shouldn't be a big deal. But I think I've got everything ready to go here. I've got all my my hoses connected, all the electronics and sensors are connected too, and uh, I should be able to see if she fires up. So let's go ahead and do that. Fuel pressure is there. Pretty low in gas here, but. Go ahead and crank it. Alright, oil pressure's there. That was kind of nerve wracking. Finally, the motor was installed and it worked great. Uh, with that, you guys, I'm going to end the video here. Hope you guys liked what you saw. Keep Stay posted. I'm going to keep posting things about this car. Uh, the next thing up here is do some tuning with it and take it out in the street here and see how it goes. But if you like what you saw, go ahead and give it a like. Um, feel free to subscribe too. I'm going to keep posting out videos here just like this.